Hello. Right, a bit more paid work to do. Uh, this is a gate and it's similar age to the gate that was in a video that I did not all that long ago. But this gate is quite different in its construction so I thought it might make a nice contrast to show you how this one's put together and how I'm going to restore this one. The previous gate was made of um, wrought iron and cast iron. It had a wrought iron frame but all the decoration inside was cast iron. This one is entirely wrought iron so all this decoration here is forged. Just like the other gate the joints are made in a woodworking style. This strap is brought down to a pin which comes through and is peened over on here. Unlike the other gate which had its decoration held in by little pins going into the framework surrounding the decoration, this has the decoration held in place by these collars. So these are little iron collars that are um, strips of iron that you heat up and they'll be wrapped around there tightly and they grip it in position. Moisture is collected in this bit and as it's corroded that iron is blown out and the collar's popped off. That effect can be seen up here even more so. No welded joints in there, it's either pinned through like that or riveted like that or we've got wrapped collars like that. The other indicator that this is an old gate is that it's made of wrought iron. Wrought iron is iron that comes out of a mill and then it's folded over and heated and it's rolled again and rolled again and the more times you heat it up and compress it and roll it again the more layers you get in there and the better the quality of the iron. And so you can see that when it starts to corrode those layers start to separate and it delaminates and that's completely different to the way mild steel corrodes. Wrought iron can weather and mild steel can't really so if you have a, a gate that's made of mild steel and it starts to rust that rust will just go straight straight through it. With wrought iron and with cast iron to an extent the weathering will stay on the on the top surface, it doesn't penetrate. It's only when you have moisture sat for a long time in certain areas that you get proper corrosion with raw iron. I think I'm going to take out this decoration here. I'll heat up these collars um, open them up and then this whole middle bit should drop out. So I've, I've got to make a scroll here anyway so I might as well take the whole thing out then I can blast the whole area put it back and it'll all be nice and clean. Then I'll get the grinder out and I'll cut off things like the hinges here that aren't going to be needed and this latch which is going to be replaced as well. has been trapped been able to work its way through the whole the whole bar so that bit will have to be replaced most of the rest looks fairly intact structurally Cool. Now it's ready for blasting.
seconds into the job I realise why I don't do it anymore. Yeah. <sighs> But of course you've got to wear all the gear, particularly the breathing apparatus, or you're just not going to get foot. Well, let's have a look anyway. You can see how clean it comes up from shot blasting. I mean, there's, there's no other process like it really. And you can see here after blasting it, just how bad some of the corrosion was. I mean, that's just disappeared that bit there. Broken glass is actually quite eco-friendly. Um, it's completely inert if you think about it. It's just like, well, it is baked sand, so that's, that's fine. You leave that wherever. Um, the paint, <laughs> the paint's a bit more iffy. But since I'm currently doing two gates a year, I'm not going to worry about it. This is the particularly nasty section here. I'm going to have to cut at least that much out and replace it. I think what I'll do is use one of the bits of hinge, which fortunately is the same rectangular section as these bits. Well, this would have been uh, two inch by a uh, half inch, or in modern equivalent, obviously 50 by 12. It's interesting to note that all the steel that you buy nowadays is simply a metric version of the old imperial sizes. And by that I mean when this was new, newly rolled, all this wrought iron, obviously that was imperial, like I say, two inch by half inch. Um, but all the stuff when it went to metric just carried on being the same size, they just relabeled it. And you could do that with what this is, or this the steel that I buy for making gates and things like that is um, hot rolled steel and it comes out with a black oxide on it and hence the name blacksmithing. All that stuff then is like I say just metric equivalents of the old imperial but because it's always sold as only a nominal size it's fine to do that. It's always plus or minus one or two millimeters and that's why you get strange progressions in the sizes available. So if you go to a steel stockholder and you want, say, square bar or round bar or whatever, it will come in 10, 12, 16 and then 20. And the reason for that old progression is 10 would be 3 eighths, more or less, 12 is half inch, more or less, uh, 16 is 5 eighths, more or less, and then 20 is 3 quarters, more or less. <laughs> anyway, I should be able to replace at least this section with exactly the right size because I've got it here and the spare bit I chopped off. Some of these scrolls are going to need replacing. Um, some of them I'll leave. It's a case of anything like this. It, I don't want to replace every bit of damage or I'll end up with a new gate and that's not that's not the intention at all. I hope it's apparent now then how different the construction is on this gate to the previous one that I restored. An interesting, well, to me at least, <laughs> an interesting com uh, comparison between two very different construction styles and potentially from exactly the same era. I mean, there's a wide variance. This could have been made from any time from, like, pff, I would guess, at 1820 right through to 1920. It could have been. I mean, it's nothing to stop you making one like this now, of course, but it'd be phenomenally expensive. And you certainly wouldn't do it in raw time. Quite a lot to do then. Um, I'm going to start in this bottom corner, which is as good a place to start as anywhere. Instead of having a, a lower hinge on it, I'm going to put a pin on the bottom here, made of this stuff. The pin will sit in this socket, which will be set in concrete in the ground. So I'm going to cut this bit of bar down. I'm going to drill and tap it on the end. Mm -hmm. 
when it's installed this hole will be packed full of grease and then that sits in and I need to do a corresponding hole with a bit of studding on the gate. What I'm going to do then is cut into this and I'm going to cut into that and I'm going to build up this whole area using the MIG welder and I'll also reinforce in here and then drill it and tap it. So to get the access on this side first I'm going to take out these scrolls because they need to come out and be fixed anyway. Reinforce this bit where it's corroded away. I'm just pumping in some metal there. Then I'm going to stick this piece as a reinforcement there in this corner. There it is after welding then, with that reinforcement in, now I'm going to clean all that back. Ordinarily I'd be at great pains to take out all these little imperfections here I'd sand it right back and then fill them all in again with the welder and then sand it back and so forth but with this because I zoom out a little bit it's full of dinks throughout the whole gate it's going to look very odd if I actually make this look super clean so I'll actually be adding in more imperfections into this with the die grinder to um, chew it up a bit more and uh, blend it all together properly. It's too rough to punch it to start the drill so I'm just going to start with my little, my smallest cordless drill and if necessary adjust the hole until it's in the right place. Right, I felt it go through that one, that's deep enough. It's drilling well, I'll stay with this tiny drill. I suppose buttons are flashing. This is just cutting fluid, which I use for drilling and tapping and for the bandsaw. In lieu of that, any oil is better than nothing. A bit of WD-40. Now I know that this pin, I can put a bit of studding in there, screw it in there, and that's good to go. That's that corner done. Now we can move on to the scrolls. This is one of the bits that needs replacing. This is the piece that I formed up on the swage block to do that. That'll go there. I made an identical piece to go on the other side because the same problem is here. 
and then the missing bottom of this scroll is this curve here there Just to tuck it, I'm moving this around. I'm looking at the negative space, the gap here. Because it's a scroll, it wants to be open, that gap should be opening all the time as it goes around. So about there. I'm just going to tuck it, see what it looks like. Happy with that, so I'll tack the other side. Good, and then we'll attend to the box so I can wear air defenders. Right, um, now I've got to clean up all the welds. Reweld any bits that need it, flip it over, clean up that, and then that's this section done. Just before I go in for the night, then I thought I'd make a start on the primer and the coat stuff. I'm using Zynga again, which is what I used on the last gate. And it's a very high zinc content coating rather than a standard primer. And really, as with the last gate, hand painting is the way to go with something like this. It's so textured and the, the surface has got so many pits in it. When you're brushing, you can really work the paint in. I want it to look like a smartly restored gate. That's always what I'm aiming for with restorations, is it to look smart and looked after. I don't want it to look new, <laughs> that, would, uh, that would not be the point at all. And so all the wells that I've done, for instance, 
will not be apparent in the finished article. And the same with the paint, it won't look like it's been sprayed or powder coated or anything like that. In fact, powder coating is the, is the worst option of all. Why anyone would want to cover something old in a layer of plastic is beyond me. Tomorrow then, we'll be on with the, the main scrolls. We have to make some. <laughs> I'll just repair them. Yeah, see you in the morning.